Hi, my name is Beverly Vaud and I will be giving a speech on one of San Francisco's forgotten neighborhoods, Manila Town. How many of you are Filipino American or have friends who are Filipino American? And how many of you have heard of Chinatown or Japantown? Whether or not majority of you have said yes to either of these questions, there is still a lot to learn about this once bustling neighborhood that no longer exists called Manila Town. Michelle S. Laguerre, a professor of global studies and director of this department at UC Berkeley, studied this history of Chinatown, Japantown, and Manila Town. And he explained how in the 1920s, there were major waves of immigration from China and Japan, which eventually led to exclusion acts. Then the US recruited more Filipinos and Latinos for cheaper labor. And of course, Filipinos for financial stability wanted to become overseas workers for a better opportunity for their families. The Filipino American National Society, Manila Town and Panay Educational Partnership collectively published a book called Filipinos in San Francisco to preserve the history. And they explained how Manila Town stretched for 10 blocks on Kearney Street. It had cafes, barbershops, stores. There were about 30,000 Filipinos in San Francisco as early as the 1920s. So the demographic here was Chinese and Filipino because the neighboring area was Chinatown. Next, I'd like to talk about the International Hotel. So you know how this neighborhood was 10 blocks. Um, the last standing building was the International Hotel. Estella Habal was a student activist during this time and she eventually wrote a book called Mobilizing the Filipino American Community in the Anti-Eviction Movement. Normally in Western culture, Asians are portrayed to be obedient and not very outspoken, but the truth is, especially for this event, um, when the evictions were happening towards these neighborhoods, we did fight back and it took months. On August 4, 1977, that wasn't the first eviction notice, it wasn't the second eviction notice, it was the third, and that was the final straw for the city of San Francisco. Um, so again, August 4, 1977, police came in the middle of the night. There were horses, they brought batons and axes to open up the doors in the hotel. And another writer, scholar, and teacher, Thea Correa Tagle, wrote an essay called Feeling the Manila Town and Fillmore Blues, All World Versus Politics and Politics, A Place. All, Robe, oh, All Robles is a poet and activist from that community. He's Filipino American. And he wrote a poem called Hanging On to the Caravao's Tale. In his words, Night Watch, I hotel where old and young Filipinos live, hang, and roam all day like carabaos in the mud. He was basically describing how there was a night watch since all of this happened again in the middle of the night. And these tenants were disrupted from their homes and their sleep. There were protesters there. The night was horrifying. People were dragged out. Everyone is trying to protect the elderly in the I Hotel. This story came up again recently. Brandon Yu, an Oakland-based freelance writer, had an article from SF Chronicle, and it was called A Community Lost, a Movement Born, Historical Development Battle Still Shaping San Francisco. He interviewed one of the original tenants, Pete Yamamoto, who was 23 years old during the final eviction notice in 1977. And before that, he was paying $45 a month from social security checks. So 
in perspective, he was just like us in our 20s, trying to make ends meet in San Francisco. What happened to the International Hotel? Well, it reopened in 2005, still providing affordable housing. But if you think about it this way, Manila Town was 10 blocks and it took us decades just to restore this one building, the International Hotel. In conclusion, it is really important to listen to these types of narratives due to urban development because it'll give us a better perspective on how these lives were affected.